I've, you guys, I faced some academic setbacks this week. And, you know, I'm feeling a little down. I'm feeling a little stupid. So what's the perfect way to feel smart? It's to drop some group stage predictions. Copa America 2024 is a month away in the beautiful, beautiful United States of obesity. And yeah, let's drop these group predictions. Perfect way to cure the academic blues. Because guess what? I'm a very good predictor. I am one of the best predictors you will ever see on YouTube. Go back to my Asia Cup. Go back to my AFCON uh, group predictions. I was on the money with a lot of my picks. And wait until the Euros are done and come back to my Euros video. And wait until the Copa America is done and come back to my Copa America. This video right now. Come back to this video. Like it and come back to this video. You are going to sit back and watch a masterpiece of predictions from me. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I got the I got the Argentina. I got the three stars, guys. I got the three stars. I'm repping. I'm repping. So let's go, guys. Right away. Group A. Terrible, terrible, terrible shit group. Argentina, Peru, Chile, Canada. Let's start with Peru. Well, Peru suck. Peru is on crap form. Peru fans will tell you that their team is booty cheeks. I'm going to be honest. Peru fans, go ask a Peru fan. Go find a Peruvian somewhere. Their food is great. But a Peruvian fan will tell you their team is absolute booty cheeks right now. I pray. You guys, I pray. I pray. Amen. Amen. I better not see... 40,000-year-old 40, Guerrero still playing for Peru at this Copa America. I don't even want to see him on the bench. I do not want to see him in the United States of America this summer. He better be in Peru. That guy is so old. He's so dusted. I do not want to see him on the field. So I'm going to be honest with you right now. Not much analysis on this Peru team. They suck. The quality isn't there. Their jerseys are kind of nice. But they, I guess they have that going for them. I don't expect much from Peru. Peruvian fans don't expect much for Peru. So don't be don't be asking me to give you some nice analysis on this Peru team. The analysis is they suck. Chile. Now, Chile still pulls up with guys like Vargas, Alexis Sanchez, Claudio Bravo. Thank gosh guys like Gary Medel finally take a break. Guys like Arturo Vidal don't play anymore. Hopefully. I have a feeling Vidal might just pull up to these Copa America. Uh, this Copa America. I just have a weird, disgusting feeling in my stomach. Um, and to be honest, their play, the way this Chile team plays and their performances and the results kind of just shows you, it reflects the fact that they have guys like that still on their team. Um, they will do, basically the, the way I'd put this Chile team is, they will do well and usually win most of their games against teams that are weaker than them. However, any time that this Chile team comes up against an opponent in friendlies or World Cup qualification or whatever, any time they come up against an opponent that is, you know, slightly on the level or better than them on paper, they usually do not win. They usually end up losing or drawing. So, you know, in, in a competition like this in international where a lot of these teams are probably better than you, Chile, that doesn't bode well for you for your chances. Uh, so, you know, they're not doing great. In World Cup qualification of Carnival right now, they're eighth. So that kind of tells you where this Chile team is at. They don't really have that many youngsters coming through. They don't, the end of their goal engine, like this is their golden generation on the last, last limbs. So not much expectations for Chile going to this uh, Copa America 2024. Um, Canada. Now, I had my expectations on Canada set. But just two days ago, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, they confirmed the hiring of Jesse Marsh, that bum American manager, as their new manager, two months out, a month out from this Copa America. So, you know, I'm not sure what to expect. I would advise Canada fans, don't be too excited. Jesse Marsh is not a great manager, in my opinion. He failed at Leipzig. He failed at Leeds. And he's been jobless since then. There's a reason he's been jobless. No one really wants him. He's too young. He's too inexperienced. And I feel like if the American tax plays against him, who wants an American manager? Like, not many people want an American manager, let's be honest. So, yeah, before Jesse Marsh, though, before Jesse Marsh, this Kennedy team was an up and down team. They never really got a consistent string of wins together. Um, not even when they won, they weren't even fantastic in their wins. You know what I mean? They, they weren't wowing us the last year and a half since the World Cup ended. So, even though they have guys like Alfonso Davies, uh, David Buchanan, you know, Buchanan of Inter, David of Lille, Fonzie of Bayern, we know him. 
Um, I just don't really expect much from Canada. Again, three teams into this group, low expectations, low expectations. That's kind of the sense I get from this Copa America, from some of these teams. Like, I really just don't think they have a chance. Um, but fortunately for them, two teams go out from each group. So one of Peru, Chile, or Canada is getting out of the group. So fight for that place, boys. And uh, yeah, obviously Argentina. I could sit here, sit here and tell you for an hour how good this Argentina team is, how stacked their squad is. Messi this, Messi that. He's the greatest player of all time, blah, 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 blah. They're the tournament favorites. Probably have the most stacked squad in the world. Maybe you could say France and England are on their level, but they're in the top three of the most stacked squads in the world. And yeah, with Messi still around, this is... I think Messi will be at the World Cup, but you know, guys like Di Maria, this is their last tournament. They already confirmed it. This is a last stand situation. They already won some trophies, but fuck it. Win a third international tournament in a row. And Argentina are fully capable of doing that this tournament. So as you could tell from my thoughts, they're probably, you know, tournament favorites will get first in the group. So fourth place, though, it's tough. It's the battle of mid for fourth, third, and second place in this group. I'm going to go Peru. I just think they're the weakest of the trashes. They have the least quality of Peru, Chile, and Canada. Third, I'm going to go Chile just because of the fact that I said when they come up against teams similar to their level or better than them, they f usually fail to win. They'll draw or lose, which is not doesn't bode well in, in international tournaments. And so, yeah, I'm just going to go Canada second. I feel like Jesse Marsh will be able to get a new manager bounce maybe with this team and, and make a run. Canada also very close to the United States. So their their games in the United States will probably feel like home games for them. A lot of Canada fans will be there. And yeah, obviously Argentina, first place. Messi's on your team. All the quality, Julian Alvarez, Di Maria, Enzo. Although Enzo recently got injured, so I'm not sure. But, you know, DePaul and all those guys still in the team. Emmy Martinez, absolute tournament favorites. Yeah, so Group B. Now, this is an interesting group. Let's start with Mexico. Mexico, 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 Mexico. This is the worst Mexico team of the 21st century. And this, I, this actually might be the worst Mexico team of all time. I'm being dead serious. I find this Mexico team so, so unimpressive. Tactically inept. Trash manager. They lack technical ability. Player for player, man for man. This Mexico team is the least technical Mexico team I have seen in my lifetime. And I'm 23 years old. Terrible team in terms of technical quality. And they, just, they don't even play as a team. If you saw their last game against USA, you guys, they played kick and run the entire game for 90 minutes mexico played kick and run they wouldn't control the ball they couldn't string together five ten six five ten passes it was horrid so this mexico team man what i don't have much hope for them coming into this tournament usa in, in terms of Concacaf in north america usa has passed them for the last four years now i would say usa has been better than them for four years now their talent pool is better and just surpasses Mexico in every other way. And even the fans of Mexico, I feel like they lack passion right now. And yeah, like I said, they just lack individual player quality. For So Mexico, I don't have great expectations for them in this tournament. If they do get out of the group, good. I'll think you just get knocked out in the quarterfinals anyway. I don't think they can make a run to a semifinal or a final. No way. They don't have the quality. They don't have the manager. They don't have the tactics. They don't have the... They don't have it. They don't have those Mexican players. When you think of a Mexico team... They just don't have it, man. So not much for going on for Mexico. But Ecuador, there is a ton. There is a ton going on for Ecuador. 100% for me, Ecuador is a dark horse for this tournament. Like if you're going to choose a dark horse between, you know, this is a smaller size tournament, not many teams. If you're going to choose from like maybe USA and those kinds of teams, I'm choosing Ecuador as my dark horse because they, <clears throat> if you go back to the World Cup, they were a little unimpressive. They almost got out of the group. Remember, they almost got out of the group. But right now, Ecuador, in terms of talent, the amount of talent they're pumping out of their country right now, teenage talents, people getting into European teams, top European teams, it's a conveyor belt for Ecuador right now. A conveyor belt. Right now, they have players like you see on the screen, Caicedo, Hincapié, starting center back, an important player for Leverkusen, who are about to do an undefeated season in all competitions. They have guys like Pacho at Eintracht Frankfurt, center back. They have youngster Paez, who is supposed to be one of the best. You know, Paez, 
this Ecuadorian youngster, I th he signed for Chelsea. He is supposed to be, and he probably is as good, in my opinion, as guys like Vitor Roque, Andrik, all Esteval, all the talents coming out of South America right now and those Brazilian talents. I think he's just as good as them, if not better. So lots of talent in this Ecuador team. They are a tough team to beat. I'm very excited for what they're going to do this tournament. So, yeah, Ecuador easily. I can, If they made, like, a, for example, if they make a semifinal, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, if they made a final, that'd be kind of crazy right that'd be kind of crazy but if they made a semifinal, i ain't complaining i'm not gonna sit here and be like they don't deserve it because they absolutely do um next venezuela i would say this about venezuela they kind of if you are familiar with european football they remind me of hungary a team that is very tough to beat they only have i think in the last 16 games, they only have three losses, and those three losses were very narrow, very narrow losses. Once to Colombia and two very narrow losses. No, once to Italy. My my bad. One loss to Italy, which was very close, and two very close losses to Colombia. Two very very close losses to Colombia. And in, in my ability, in my opinion, I mean the ability of their the. <laughs> Like that's that's it's tough to analyze teams that are just hard to beat. Like that's how I would say them. And the important thing though in tournament football is having that ability to make games close when they really shouldn't be and being tough to break down is one of the best qualities you could have a, a, a have as a team. And so, you know, man for man this Venezuela team is not that talented, but their new Argentinian manager Batista, I think 9 games in only has one loss. He's really getting the best out of a team that lacks the individual quality of an Ecuador. And even as bad as the Mexico team is, Mexico's team, man for man, is still better than Venezuela's. And finally, Jamaica, the Wagwan Warriors, my boys, Jamaicans, yeah, um, they're the weakest in this group, I think. <sighs> Jamaica, you know, they're the weakest in this group, but it's not, it's not by long shot. My issue with Jamaica is that my first of all, their kits are nice. Let me tell you, I love that. Let Ravel Merson in the bottom right, that yellow kit is nice. But my issue with Jamaica is that when they play teams better than them, they almost always lose. They don't draw. They almost always lose to teams that are better than them on paper, which is an issue because I think the three teams in this group are better than Jamaica. So uh, going off that, I feel like they might lose every single game in this group, but maybe. I could be proven wrong. They have guys like, remember, they have guys like Antonio who switched nationalities to Jamaica. Damari Gray, who unfortunately was at Leicester but went to Saudi for Saudi Poop League for the bag. They have guys like Reed from Fulham. So maybe that can change their prospects in this group. But to be honest, I don't think so. So I'm going to put Jamaica in fourth. I'm going to predict them to finish fourth in this group. And I think you know who I'm going to go for first in this group. So for second and third, it was really an argument in my mind between Mexico and Venezuela. And to be honest, in the end, the one thing that's pushing me for Mexico second and Venezuela third is that the fact that it's in the United States, the fact that for Mexico, every single game that they're going to play in this group stage is going to be a home game. Each game is going to be crowd fully Mexican, fully backing them. So, I think that's going to end up playing a factor and giving them the boost they need when they're lacking the quality uh, in their team to actually play good football. I think that'll make up for the fact because Mexico is a team that does pull from the energy of their fans and it does make them a better team. Um, so yeah, I think that's why I'm going to go Mexico over Venezuela for second and Venezuela in third, but I would not be surprised taking into the fact that I said, I told you guys, Venezuela is a hard team to beat. I wouldn't be surprised if Venezuela gets second. I really wouldn't. So it's close, but I'm going to go Mexico second, Venezuela third, and obviously Ecuador fourth. I, I sang my praises about Ecuador. I'm expecting big things from them. I'm expecting a huge step. The main thing I want to see from Ecuador is this tournament is a progression from the last World Cup, a, a progression of you get to a knockout stages and you challenge and really try to win in those knockout stages and get to that semifinal. I want to see a progression with this Ecuador team, especially with all the talent that they're pumping out right now. Group C. So I don't want to be disrespectful, but to be honest, with all due disrespect, oh my God, papers are flying everywhere. My, my desk is so messy. With all due disrespect, I'm not analyzing Panama and Bolivia. Straight up, I'm going to tell you right now, 
they will be third and fourth in this group. To be honest, on the screen right now, the Panama player, that fat obese guy in the bottom left, and the guy in the bottom right, I don't know who they are. I don't know their names. I don't know if they're even playing for them. They could be random people with a Bolivia and Panama jersey on. I don't know. But all I can tell you is that Panama and Bolivia, no chance. Uruguay and USA are way above their pay grade to be able to cause an upset. So, yes, I know Panama sometimes gives USA a game in CONCACAF, but I'm sorry. At an international tournament, no chance. With all due disrespect, no chance. And again, I am not sure. <laughs> I am not sure those guys on the screen wearing the Bolivian Panama jerseys even are professional footballers. I'm going to be 100 completely. I'm going to keep it. 100 with you guys, $1,000, I am not sure. So now that we got those bombs out of the way, let's talk about USA. And so the biggest the biggest issue with this USA team is the manager. Greg Berhalter, I don't know, I don't know what the US Federation sees in this guy. He constantly holds this USA team back. Greg Berhalter, or aka Greg Brickhalter, he sucks. He's ass. He's not to the guy for this USA team. This is the most talented crop of U.S. players ever. And for USA, as the sport continues to grow in their country, each generation they will continue to get better and better and better. And so this is for USA to make these steps and have so many great players, to be taking two steps backwards by having a guy like Greg Brickhalter manage your team, it's disgusting behavior from the U.S. Federation. So... Yeah, the U.S. seems so talented, but Greg's lineups are so ass. His tactics is behind all of the managers in the world. You know, he benched, remember at the World Cup, benching a, a guy like Gio Reyna. You know, tactically, like I said, sucks. So, I don't know. Only thing is, though, this group is so trash with Penn and Bolivia, he should easily be able to and comfortably be able to lead this USA team out of the groups. They have so much quality, guys. Out of for what you expect from USA historically, let me just go down some. Uh, let me just go down the list of names: McKinney, Pulisic, Ro uh, Anthony Robinson, Gio Reyna, Tyler Adams, George Weah, Malik Tillman, Musa, uh, Musa. Who's this? Uh, Chris Richards from Crystal Palace, who was a Bayern Academy center back. Then, then the list goes on. So this USA team is very talented, and they should easily. Greg Brickhalter, I know your manager, but you should easily get this team out of this group. And obviously the last team, Uruguay. For me, hand on heart, Uruguay for me is the second favorites for this tournament. These guys are on a roll. These guys are on fire. Darwin, De La Cruz, Valverde, Jimenez, Araujo, Ugarte, Bentancourt. Just, those are just some of the names these guys have, some of the quality player, uh, quality players that they have in their team. And in my opinion, since the World Cup, and they were trash, they were garbage in that World Cup, got grouped. They were the second best team in South America. They have been the second best team in South America since the last since the World Cup ended. So last year and a half, I think they've been second best in South America. Um, and they've gotten wins in, in, in World Cup qualifying for in 2026 World Cup qualifying. They've beaten Argentina. They've beaten Brazil comfortably, too. So they have the quality. They're on a roll. Marcelo Bielsa is cooking with Uruguay. So my expectations of this Uruguay team is super, super high. So, you know, starting from the top of this group, Bolivia fourth, Panama third. I just think there's no justification behind that. I think that could go either way. I just think Panama has better players. I don't know. I, I feel like I know more about Panama. I've seen Panama at the 2018 World Cup. So, you know, th that probably might be the worst analysis you'll ever hear. But trust me, I'm the goat at these prediction things. Third and third and fourth, Panama, Bolivia. Second, you're, it's pretty obvious who I'm going to go second. I'm going to go USA. I don't think USA have the quality to trump Uruguay for a first place spot. Seriously. And, you know, when we get to Group D, the last group, that might play again. They That might play against Uruguay. I don't know. That might play against Uruguay. Let, we'll Wait till we get to Group D. But, yeah, Uruguay first. Second favorites for this tournament, absolute favorites in this group. Darwin, Darwin might be trash for Liverpool. And by the way, Liverpool fans bullied that guy so hard that he deleted all his Instagram posts concerning that club. So that's how bad it's been at Liverpool this season. So many misses. But for Uruguay, Darbibi, Darwizi, he gets that he gets that ball in the back of the net. So Darwin, X Factor. Let's see Uruguay. Prove me right. I think they will.
and Group D, last group, guys. Fourth group, Brazil, Colombia, Paraguay, Costa Rica. Let's start with Brazil. For me, this is the second worst Brazil team of this century. I will still maintain, even though they got to the semifinals in the 2014 World Cup, the 2014 Brazil team that lost 7-1 to my boys, my German brothers, that is the worst Brazil team of all time, in my opinion. You cannot play at home in a World Cup semifinal and lose 7-1 as the five-time World Cup champions. You cannot. Yes, Neymar was injured. Yes, Thiago Silva was injured. You cannot do that in front of your fans like that. So worst Brazil team of all time. But of this century, this Brazil team right now, for me, second worst Brazil team of this century, 100%. I think... No, here's the thing. The Brazil team has quality, and they just released their Copa America squad list. Guys like Neymar... Not going to be in the team, Richarlison, Anthony, Casemiro, all not picked, which I think are good signs for Brazil because it shows that they're getting rid of the players that are bogging them down and don't play consistently for them. Obviously, Neymar has been performing for Brazil, but he has the knee injury, so he's not going to make it in time. Um, but this Brazil team has the quality. They just can't perform. In World Cup qualifying right now for the 2026 World Cup, for the first time in their ever in their history, ever, they lost three games in a row. Three games in a row for the first time ever. And I think for the first time ever in World Cup qualifying, they lost a game at home in Brazil. So this Brazil team is breaking all the wrong records in World Cup qualifying right now. But again, this is an international tournament. This is Copa America. This is different gravy. This is different pay grade competition. And the, the issue with this Brazil team is just the top players need to perform. I think that's what's letting them down at the moment. Vinny, Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo, they are fantastic for Real Madrid, and they just made it to another Champions League final. But Rodrigo and Vinny Jr., the guys who are supposed to be the stars of this attack, let's be honest, they are trash for Brazil. Vinny Jr. only has like three goals for Brazil. Rodrigo only has four. Hendrik has played two games, and he has two goals for Brazil. He almost has as many goals as those two. So... You know, for Brazil, if they want to be serious, Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo have to pull up and be serious. So, yeah, that's that's Brazil. The top players just don't perform at the level they're supposed to be when they put on that Brazil kit. And that's the main issue with this Brazil team. Um, but for me, they're still one of the tournament favorites. But I truly do think Uruguay is second favorites. I would probably put Brazil third favorites for the tournament. Colombia, man. For me, the strongest group, the strongest team in this group. You guys, Colombia... Shakira FC. Guess how many games are unbeaten right now? Guess. Actually, fuck your guess. They're 20 games unbeaten. This Colombia team right now is 20 games unbeaten. And if I'm being honest with you, I don't think this Colombia team, you know, is stacked with so much quality. I think the Ecuador team has more quality than this Colombia team. But Nestor, uh, Nestor Lorenzo, their Argentinian manager, is coaching these guys so well. He's getting the best out of these guys. He understands what his best lineup is, and he understands how he wants his wants his uh, wants his Colombian players to play. He just gets it. And you know, guys like David Ospina and guys like James Rodriguez on the screen are still in this team. But the absolute star of this team, everyone knows, it's Luis Diaz. And Luis Diaz, he's kind of like the Darwin complex. He's all right for Liverpool. But he plays a lot better for Colombia. I just feel like he has more freedom when he puts on the Colombian shirt and he's able to, you know, show his Colombian flair, his South American Latino flair on the ball, his dribbling skill. I feel like he's able to show it more for Colombia. And he's the real star of this uh, Colombian team. So, you know, very strong, 20 games unbeaten. Luis Diaz star of the team. And, you know, in the last year, this Colombia team has beaten Germany, they've beaten Japan. And in recently, they beat Spain and Brazil. And they've drawn against uh, Uruguay. So this is a very, very strong Colombia team coming into this tournament on freaking fire. So super high expectations for them. Paraguay, yeah, I mean, not much hope for Paraguay, in my opinion. They're not on good form at all recently in the last year, year and a half. But I will say, even though they have not been on good form and they've been losing games a lot, they're still weirdly a hard team to beat because whether they win or lose in their wins and losses, go down their fixture schedule, they and their results, you will see a lot of 1-0 score lines. And I think the main reason you see that and, uh, and the reason that they're not able to get more wins is because they're being coached very well. Don't get me wrong. Paraguay is getting coached really well. 
hence all these close games, 1-0 wins, you know, mostly 1-0 losses. Um, but the reason why you see a lot of those 1-0s is that because in those close games, they don't have enough quality. They just don't have enough quality to pull away in games that are close and get those dubs. They just don't have the quality. And, you know, a guy like Almiron, yes, he plays for Newcastle, and yes, um, he's been great. You know, he hasn't been great, but, you know, he's the star of this team is what I'm trying to say. He can't carry them. He's not that kind of guy. You know what I mean? He's not a Neymar. He's not a Messi. So that's why for Paraguay, you know, they win, they lose. They don't have the quality to really get over those, you know, close games and get consistent wins. And, you know, finally, Costa Rica, just I'm going to treat them like Panama and Bolivia. I don't think they have any chance. Fourth place for them automatically. I'm sorry, Kaylor Navas. I'm sorry. Just no. Paraguay third. And to be honest, guys, I think you guys could tell from the way I spoke about Brazil and Colombia, I'm going to actually go Brazil second, and I'm going to go Colombia first. And if you remember in Group C, I said Uruguay getting first might actually go against them in their favor because if they get first and Brazil gets second, like I'm predicting, they would play Brazil in the quarterfinal. So sucks to suck. But, you know, either way for Uruguay, if they get first in that group, I'd still hate to play Colombia. I think Colombia is the better team than Brazil right now. So either way, you're going to have a hard game. Uh, so, yeah, all four groups done. Remember, this isn't like the Euros. Third place teams don't go through. Top two from each of the four groups go through. Eight teams total. They start in the quarterfinals on the knockout stage. It is what it is. And, you know, if you disagree with me, I don't really care because I'm good at predicting these things. I am very good at predicting tournament football. Just go back to my Asia Cup videos. Go back to my AFCON videos. And at the end of the summer, come back to this video and go back to my Euros group predictions video. And you will be thoroughly impressed with your boy, Hokage P, Hokage Puya. I got the Luffy hat. I'm the fucking pirate king. I got the three stars right here. Argentina World Cup winner's badge. I got this jersey 50% off Adidas store. Real jersey, $90. Instead, 50% off, 45 bucks. That's what your boy does. I get deals. And I make steals. That didn't make sense because I don't even play baseball. I don't even play baseball. I don't steal bases. Baseball's lame. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it there. Easy predictions for me. I feel like these groups are kind of straightforward, barring Group B, which can be close. I think Group A, C, and D are pretty easy to predict, in my opinion. I wouldn't be surprised if I correctly predicted all of these groups. I'm just a genius. I'm just a genius. So from one genius to another. Actually, you guys aren't geniuses. From one genius to my peasants out there watching me, I hope you like the video. And yeah, I'm telling you, save this video, come back to it in July, and you are going to bow down to me. I guarantee it. Thanks for watching. Peace.